Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, and by following your holy will, may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Well, I welcome you here on uh, this Sunday after the Ascension, also Memorial Day weekend. Yesterday, Sutherland had their service. I think that was indoors. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Friday night you had your service that was indoors, correct? So they didn't get to go outside. Uh, we're planning here at Deerfield to have ours tomorrow. I don't think that's going to be outdoors, but Waitley is gathering right now. And uh, does anybody know, are they outdoors today? Are they plan and shoot for outdoors? Nobody knows. Uh, but I think they may have the best chance of all three towns to actually be outdoors on this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, so we have our final song is, a, uh, is in recognition of Memorial Day, uh, but tomorrow is our real Memorial Day service, and so Mass will be at 745 here. Uh, we pray for all of our war dead, and by extension our, our veterans who have passed on. And so that 745 gets out just about 815. That means if you want to come here to church, you can then head right over to Frontier. If it is going to be indoors, if not, it's right at the town park. Uh, they'll have their service there, and I will be offering the benediction. And then weather permitting, uh, they'll go to the cemeteries, and I'll have another prayer up by um, our new church flagpole. And so I do want to say thank you to uh, the guys for listing their names to be in next week's uh, bulletin. Uh, but we now have a solar light at the top of our cemetery flagpole. And that solar light means that all summer long we'll have the American flag uh, flying, which would be very nice over there. Uh, so on this Memorial Day weekend, we do, um, in our private prayers at this time, keep in mind all of those who have died in battle, um, our veterans who have passed on. And, and also, we do want to offer prayers for peace. Um, they say that... Soldiers know better than anyone the horrors of war. And uh, so maybe they pray for peace even more than somebody like me who's only seen war on John Wayne movies or something like that. Um, you know, war is a valiant effort, and in a lot of times it's for a very good cause. Um, but we have to also pray for peace, that somehow um, wars, they, they've got to end. I mean, we're getting to the point where we can destroy the entire world. Um, you hear about like, a little country like North Korea, they can't even feed their people, and they're, they're dropping all this money to have a nuclear weapon to feel safer. Something is screwy. It's just not making any sense anymore. And so on this Memorial Day weekend, we say thank to all of those who serve and who have served, but we also have to pray for peace so that at some point um, these deaths may come to an end. So at this time, as we do gather for this Mass of Easter, this Mass of Memorial Day weekend, I ask you to please make a private examination of your conscience. <laughs> and then we now recite the Confidio together. I confess to so Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I publicly express sorrow for the many sins by which I have offended you. I resolve to amend my life, to improve and sanctify, endeavoring henceforth to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask all those who dwell within the Church of Christ, the Blessed Mother Mary, the Holy Apostles, the Martyrs, and Faithful, who have lived and suffered and died for the Gospel of Jesus Christ, as well as you, my brothers and sisters, witness my confession and pray for me to our Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. And your Lord, hear our prayer. And our prayer you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, most gracious Father, the purity of heart, you may worthy fulfill this holy action, establish remembrance of the Last Supper and the death of Jesus Christ, and for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect Master, because you said there were two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. We also ask, Lord, that through this holy liturgy, you may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will, bringing us together in one great family, 
guided by your commandments, and by love, truth, and justice. Amen. And may we say together, let us praise the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, indivisible, revealed in triune power for all time, now and ever. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to the people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be still before the Lord, wait for God. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Turn from evil and do good, which may inhabit the land forever. The Lord loves justice and does not abandon the faithful. Alleluia, alleluia. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God. You cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with the burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips so that they worthy proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus had said these things, he raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that he may give eternal life to all those that you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you have sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words that you gave me I have given to them. And they accepted them and truly understood that I came from you, and that I have believed, that they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I did not pray for the world, but for the ones that you have given me out of the world, so that they may become yours. And everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, 
but they are in the world, while I am returning to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, that they may be one, just as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus 
eating a piece of broiled fish. Broiled fish is the last testimony, the final attempt of this wonderful writer to try to prove to us that the resurrection is real. And this sums up for me the futile attempt to try and explain what simply cannot be explained. It can only be experienced. And that is that the resurrected body is a body, but it is not a body. This is something that we have to accept on faith. This is something that we have to experience, that we know that Jesus is real because we have him here. And that can never, ever be explained as if it were some kind of scientific proof. The resurrected Jesus appears and disappears at will. But he can also be touched. He can also go out and eat. And I think what Luke is struggling to tell us is that Jesus is recognized as real and alive after the reality of his crucifixion and death and burial. Just as real as all those horrors were, so was the reality that Jesus was again with them. Jesus didn't give up who he was on the cross. Jesus remains Jesus even after the resurrection. And at that same time, Jesus carries every moment of every encounter, of every experience, of every single person he ever met. And he carries all of that with him into heaven. Every scar on his sacred body, he carries with him into heaven. And as he ascends back up into heaven, he assumes his rightful place, but he never forgets the humanity that he shared for 33 years. Jesus changed the nature of God. And I know that sounds a little bit scandalous because we're used to thinking about God as perfect and therefore perfect means unchanging, but that is a concept of human philosophy, not of God's revelation. As the church was growing up and trying to explain this unexplainable reality that Jesus was here, but Jesus was in heaven, Jesus was a person, but Jesus was the Son of God, the mind couldn't wrap, its, uh, mind, the mind couldn't wrap around all of this, and so it grabbed on to Greek philosophy. And the philosophers saw change as a sign of imperfection, that something inferior was getting a little bit better, or maybe something better was getting a little bit worse. And either way, change didn't fit with the idea of perfection. We imagine that the perfect must mean unchanging, and therefore God was also unchanging. But that is a very cold God. It means that God sits up there and he doesn't change no matter how much we pray to him. It doesn't matter how bad the world gets, God doesn't care. It doesn't matter how much we make God rejoice, he doesn't care. God is unchanging. That is not the God we worship. Again, that unchanging God is human philosophy. It is not God's revelation. It is not our faith. In the Old Testament, God changes his mind. And that is seen as evidence and proof that he listens to us. And for Christians, how can we possibly say that God is the same both before and after Jesus born, before and after Jesus crucified? Jesus is God incarnate. Jesus is God living amongst us as one of us. For Jesus' life to be real and meaningful, it has to make a difference in the life of God. The Jesus who ascended into the heavens is the resurrected Jesus who still has the marks from the nails in his hands and his feet, the lance in his side, the crown of thorns around his head, the, the glorified Jesus of heaven sitting on that throne. He's got all of those marks. And every time he looks down at his hands, he sees the cross again. How can we possibly argue that God never changes when we also believe that that same Jesus is our God. And this affects how God looks upon us. No matter how many times we mess up, Jesus looks at that hand and he knows how limited we are. In our next Bible study group meeting, I'm hoping that we make it to John chapter 5. And here Jesus is testifying to his equality with God. Over and over in that chapter, he says, I'm the Son of God, the Son of God, the Son of God. And that God himself has given authority to the Son of God. And then in this entire passage about Jesus being the Son of God, then strike all of a sudden out of nowhere. Jesus then says that when I become your judge, I don't do it as the Son of God. I do it as the Son of Man. Because he is one of us. When Jesus ascended into heaven, it doesn't leave us behind. He doesn't leave his humanity behind. He brings us right up into the Godhead so that all of us may be one, which is that repeated prayer of the gospel, and which is going to be a repeated prayer of our canon of the Mass. That is a powerful statement of hope. People do horrible things to each other. A 
I think about the bombing of Manchester, England, about the savagery of going out and targeting, probably looking for blowing up little girls and teens, and the blasphemy of doing such things in the name of God. But I also remember that Salman Abedin is a man, one man, maybe helped by some others, but it's a small number of people, and it's also a small people. These are not people that get statues put up here. These are small people. And then I watched this thousands of people of different faiths, of different ethnicities and races from all over the world came together in defiance of that kind of hatred, and the world supported them, not little people like Salman Abed. We were created in the image of God, and now with Jesus' ascension, our human nature has become a part of God. There is goodness in us. There is, and it's all up to us to live up to that potential of goodness. The ascension reminds us that our human nature is now a part of God because of Jesus. It reminds us also of who we can be. Salmon of Betty's are real, but they are the aberration. There are better people than that, and they outnumber the ones who make the front page with stupid acts of violence. The ascension reminds us that our human nature is a part of God, that we can be godly in our lives. So may we, with our faith lives active, may we somehow be able to find that deep spirituality that is within us. May we worship God and then come closer to the God who loves us as much as Christmas, the God who loves us as much as the crucifixion, the God who sits up in heaven on the throne with the nail prints in his hands, nail prints in his feet, the lance mark in his side, the crown of thorns mark here, and every time he thinks about us, he remembers that we have our limitations. So may we be as godly as God is, because he now has brought our humanity to him. May we be worthy of that. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Lord, as we gather at this time, we offer prayers for David Rafley on the 43rd year of his passing, which will be on May 30th. It's offered by his wife, Carolyn Rafley. We offer prayers for the soul of Michael Suchak, only 30 years old, who passed away this past week. It's offered by Cindy Benjamin. We offer prayers uh, for Karen Hersey, who is still recovering from her recent shoulder surgery. It's offered by her family and also her choir sisters here at the church. We also continue to pray for Mary Durkee, who is currently at the center uh, at Elaine, uh, center, at Elaine, that center for Elaine and Adley. Uh, this is offered by her friends and family here at Holy Name of Jesus. We also continue to pray for, pray for Liz Richmond battling cancer and raising three young girls on her own. Alex, a 16-year-old with Loma Hodgkin's disease. Alicia, a young mother of three with stage four breast cancer. It's all offered by Cynthia Benjamin. We offer our prayers for Frank Sprosky. It's offered by the Sprosky Gates and Kirkendall families. We also pray for Bishop Thomas Gannat, his health and well-being, and also for the strength and well-being of his wife, Catherine. It's offered by myself. We offer prayers for Richard Poe. It's offered by the Poe and Foster families. And also, two-year-old Jack Soleil is offered by Marianne Foster. I'd also like to offer prayers in memory of Maurice Lazelle, who is my old college chaplain, who died this past week of cancer. I'd also like to uh, say a special prayer. Uh, Lieutenant Carol Ann Drosba and Lieutenant Elizabeth Jones were assigned to the Third Field Hospital in Saigon and they died in a helicopter crash near Saigon on February 18, 1966. In Drosba was from Dunmore, Pennsylvania. Jones was from Allendale, South Carolina, and both were only 22 years old. I just learned recently from Father Senior Sultishak in a phone conversation that this Lieutenant Drosba was one of the first two women killed in action in Vietnam and that Lieutenant Drosma belonged to our cathedral parish in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Her sister, Lorraine, is married to Father Senior Kershansky in our Plantsville, Connecticut church. May she and all of our war dead rest in peace, and may we, especially in this Memorial Day weekend, never forget their sacrifice and all those who have sacrificed um, in war. And the last prayer I'd like to offer is for, and I, I'm 
holding off, but I want to make sure I have the name right. Ann Decision Check. Ann Decision Check, who passed away, offered by the Decision family. Um, is that your mom? No, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know who Ann, okay. So Ann Decision Check, though. I have the name correct. Okay. So we'll pray for Ann Decision Check as well. For all these prayers, were, oh, I forgot. Are there any other prayers from the congregation? I'm sorry. All set. For all these prayers, Lord, plus the private ones that we bring before you at this time, we ask you, Lord, to hear all of them. We ask you to bless each and every one of us here gathered. We ask you also to be with those who are perish who are unable to be with us here today, and those who are perish who have chosen not to be with us here today. And these things together, Lord, we pray by sin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.
Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the Passion, Resurrection, and Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, in honor of Blessed Mother Mary and all the saints, that may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Amen. Almighty Father, send the promised Spirit upon these gifts and into our hearts as well to direct our faith, to confirm our hope, and to enliven our love. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Take courage, I have overcome the world. 
If you live in me, and my words stay a part of you, you may ask what you will, and it will be done for you. Anyone who loves me will be true to my word. My Father will love him. We will come to him, and we will make our dwelling place with him. I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me, I would have in my company, where I am to see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the archpriestly prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took breath into his holy and venerable hand, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, my fool, we, your servants, and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presents a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance as from him, who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith, that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask, you, Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. To these souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life, and to those who during life strayed from the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shorten their suffering. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all of your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Deliver us, Lord, from all of evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our days, supported by the help of your mercy, that we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave in peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused by judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a healing longing, holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last and I be entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives reigns with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only be saved the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that He has given me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. For your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be with you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came to be, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found light, light for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all may believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willingness, but by God. And the Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God.